Thank you for joining me for another beekeeping video. I'm David Burns, EAS Certified Master Beekeeper. I really do appreciate you tuning in today. I've got some fun stuff to share with you. We're going to have a good time, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, I want to start by letting you know that I really love it when you subscribe. So please click on the subscribe button below and join up with me so you will be notified each time I make a new video. You'll be notified when you click on the bell, so do that as well. Today I want to share some things about spring tips, what you need to do coming out of winter with your hives and get them ready uh, for a great year. And also I want to share with you some interesting things that I'm getting uh, from some of my B Team 6 members. I want to show you uh, some uh, pictures they're sending me, results of some uh, Bellsville, Maryland Bee Lab that they are sending me. So we'll talk about some of these things. And Sherry, my wife, is joining me for coffee time. So let's jump right into it. Spring is a time when your overwinter colonies are going to need some attention. And hopefully they're busting at the seams and you need to do something. The first thing you want to do is check for queen cells. You don't want to lose half your colonies in a swarm because they'll just fly away. They'll have to raise another queen. So what you want to do first is go out and do a mite test. That will give you an idea if you need to treat for mites in the spring. Start the year with mites as low as possible. Now, once you've done that, what I want you to do is uh, make some splits from those colonies that are busting at the seams and will swarm anyway if you do nothing. So I usually take four frames of brood out with the old queen, move them over to a new colony, and let the existing hive that survived that's really big raise their own queen. That's a great way for me to do uh, splits. Reduce the pressure and the instinct of these colonies swarming coming out of spring. Uh, the next thing you want to do is feed, feed, feed. Uh, not all of us are in a warm climate yet, just starting to get that way. So those of you that don't have a lot of flowers yet, and it's still getting into the 30s at night, you want to feed your bees in the spring, even your splits. Uh, get them going good. And then also what you need to do now is put some supers on and start collecting that spring flow that's going to start or has started where you're at. So be sure and do that. Now, uh, if you're interested in more details about um, spring management, I have an entire course online for managing your bees in the spring. It talks more in detail about all the things I mentioned, and it just drills down into more details. Someone asked me the other day, uh, did, are my online courses just an accumulation of, my, of these YouTube videos? Not at all. No, they're not. My online courses are courses um, that have new video that I filmed in order to make those videos and they have information that's a lot more in depth than what I show here on YouTube. So be sure and check out my online courses, especially the one on spring management uh, or you might as well buy the whole package. My ultimate beekeeping course is 50% off through the end of this month and that's going to be over in a few weeks. People cry when we take them back to full price. Uh, they've been half price for about two months now at the end of April. And uh, so don't be someone that's going to cry when they go back to full price. They won't be at half price again until the way into the end of the year around Black Friday. So you want to take, you know, the season will be over by then. So you want to take advantage of them now. Okay, so let's talk about this. Look at this shirt that I'm wearing. It says, I've got your back. And I love this shirt because as... Um, a coach to so many hundreds of people around the U.S. on beekeeping. That's what I want you to know is I've got your back. These are Bee Team 6 members that contact me for help along the way, and they sign up for my beekeeping program called Bee Team 6. Today I want to share with you several things that uh, people sent me just yesterday. Now the first one I want to talk about is a lab report. Had a B Team 6 member, uh, a new B Team 6 member, I believe, that sent me a lab report and said, uh, what does this mean? So let's take a look at it. You can see here, uh, here's the lab report. And the first thing it says is small high beetle. Uh, it doesn't give a quantitative number, really. It just says they must see some there. Everybody sees small high beetles. So, okay, I'm good with that. It says Nozema SP period. And then it describes the details as 1.8 million spores per bee. Now, what does that mean? How do you interpret that? 
This is interesting. Well, Nosema sp. period means Nosema species. So I do believe that the Beltsville lab uh, does not differentiate between Nosema serrane and Nosema apis. They're just clumped together. So that's a total count of Nosema spores. Now, how do we determine the threshold? I don't know for sure if we have a scientific irrefutable threshold that makes total sense. I read some materials, some articles, I think a couple of years ago, where it was established that about 1 million spores per bee is the threshold. And I think it's still kind of, the jury's still out on that. I don't know if everybody agrees with that. So in this case, 1.8, if we use that older model of, uh, of a million spores being the threshold, 1.8 is twice as many almost. So that's way over the top. And so Nozema uh, is a problem with these hives, or uh, the bees that were sent in uh, to be evaluated. Um, these hives did perish, and this is a report of the bees that the uh, Bee Team 6 members sent in. Now, did they perish from Nozema? You know, Nozema is an interesting thing. It's a, uh, it's, it's a microsporidian, uh, gets into the gut lining of the wall, shoots a filament into uh, the walls and takes over cells and things like that. It just, it basically does away with the lining of that second stomach that makes it impossible for the bees to fully uh, process, digest their food, and they just perish. But does it kill bees? Well, of course it does, but it seems like that when you have nozema, if you have a low spore count, that the bees really don't, they're not as bothered by nozema until they have other stressors. And with other stressors, nozema can then really be the kind of the nail in the coffin that makes a hive perish. So I guess we would say nozema would be really bad if you already had low populations that couldn't keep the hive warm, warm in winter. And if you already had some deals going on where you had a high varroa count or my, uh, a high um, viruses passed on or vectored by the, the mites, these combination of things with nozema could really take out a hive. And then it says mites. And look what it says for mites here. It does show 2.3. Anything below three mites per 100 bees is kind of our threshold. It's the point where we say, okay, that's tolerable. Um, it's still not best. We like zero per 100, but that's hard to achieve. But anyway, that doesn't sound terrible. So that's what all this report really says about the bees I just thought it'd be fun for you to take a look at that. Also, look at another thing. Uh, in this photo here, the, there are uh, two pictures that were sent to me. Uh, these I got by a text from a B Team 6 member, and, and basically it said, uh, what, are, what are these uh, pictures of? What am I seeing here? Well, as you can tell, it's not always fully clear. Some pictures are a little bit too pixelated, and I can't always focus in but using my best ability to see what's going on, to best my ability appears this picture here uh, is a picture of larvae. You can see some cap cells uh, adjacent to it. So I'm thinking that it's open larvae, open larvae that are not uh, healthy. They've either died, perished, they look a little bit uh, slimy, like they're dead, I would even say, I can't tell for sure, but you know, it looks like even sac brood in one of the cells. Um, so anyway, what, what would you do here? I wanna scrape the deceased pupae or brood off of this uh, frame. I wanna scrape it off, clean it up. I'm not gonna use Clorox or bleach or anything like that. I'm just gonna scrape it off the best I can. I'm not gonna scrape off all the wax or all the comb, especially comb that is good and has nothing deceased in it. I would just scrape that off and, and clean it up as best I can, dry it off, and if I can, I'm gonna wax over it with some melted wax. Now the next photo, aha, now this can look alarming when you see this, it's like, what is all this? Is it larvae that's died, is it bacteria? But if you look closely, this is stored nectar slash um, sugar water, maybe the beekeeper fed it in the late 
fall or spring, but it, but it appears, and if you look closely, you can see globules. Now what's happened here is that sugar water has crystallized in that frame, and that's all that is. The bees are not going to be able to do much with that other than just take it outside the hive. It's, it's just too hard for them to consume. Um, so that's these two pictures represent uh, things that B Team 6 members send me. This uh, is an example. Another last example, uh, yesterday a B Team 6 member in Texas sent me this photo and said, are these queen cells? Well, it's a beautiful black piece of foundation, plastic foundation. Bees are drawing out some nice comb, very white wax from uh, bees that are just producing wax. It's a good start on that frame. And right in the middle, we have this. Are those queen cells? Absolutely not. Those are not queen cells. That is some type of developing um, dirt dauber, some type of wasp that's developing there. Now, this probably came about in storage. When these frames were placed by the beekeeper in storage for the next year, then maybe they pulled off some supers that the bees didn't pull out and stored them in the garage. Dirt daubers made a nest there. Sometimes things like that also could happen in storage before they're sold. Uh, if they're stored in an open warehouse where dirt divers can get in boxes and things, they could even arrive from, a, from a, um, someone who sold them these. But likely the beekeeper left them out in the open, dirt divers took over. And so, no, those aren't queen cells. <laughs> so these are the kind of questions that I love to help you with. If uh, I, I filled up B Team 6 uh, with everyone who was interested in it I, as my last I think my last video I said I had four spots and those were taken. I decided to open it up a little bit more. So I'm going to open it up to 10 more spots. Some of you were very discouraged that it closed up so fast after my last video. So I'm going to have 10 more spots open for v B Team 6 members. If you want me to be your mentor, uh, I'd love to help out. So be sure, I'll leave a link below so you can subscribe to my B Team 6 mentorship coaching program and I would love to be one who helps you. You can call me, send me texts like you've seen today, uh, email me pictures when you're concerned about things, and I'll do my best to help you along your beekeeping endeavors, okay? So I hope these tips have been fun for you. Now, Sherry and I are going to sit down and have some fun, so join me and Sherry for a cup of coffee. So what's been going on with you, Sherry? Oh, not a lot's been going on with me. Not much? Yeah? <laughs> no, just doing that. This is our busy time of the year. So uh, just yeah. getting busy keeping the business going. We've got all the grandchildren over today and they're playing around here. They might you might see them run past or something, but yeah. Yeah. So the grandkids are here. We're like, let's go out and make a video. <laughs> Here's a bunch of toys. <laughs> you have That's fun. Right. <laughs> And your coffee, or you're, you're actually having tea. You're not much of a coffee drinker. I'm not. Am. I don't drink coffee. David does have the best coffee yeah. of anybody that I know of, but I'm not a coffee drinker. I'm more of a tea drinker. Yeah. So. And uh, you do drink my coffee sometimes. I do. I do drink it sometimes. And you drown it <laughs> with adult additives, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. I only need a little bit of coffee in the morning, just a little bit. And a whole lot of rum chata <laughs> <laughs> to get your day going. Huh? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I don't really like flavored coffee that much, uh, but I, rum chata in coffee does taste good. Just a little bit. It, it does, but you said you don't like flavors in your coffee, but your your coffee is very flavorful. It is. Right now I have about 10 different uh, types of green beans uh, from a lot of different countries and areas that I'm trying out. And today is Kona, K-O-N-A coffee. Koe, Kona. Koe Ko Kona. <laughs> K-O-N-A. K-O-N-A. Kona. <laughs> I have no idea where that is. It sounds Hawaiian. And what do you like about that? Ah, yeah, it has, the f it doesn't have a strong acidicness to it. Um, it has some deep, more robust flavors of coffee that are very rich but it's not you know some coffee you drink it and it's it's almost like you've added water to an ashtray <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's so bitter and yeah, uh burnt that. uh and i roasted them kind of a little darker than i normally do so it's it's a good coffee what do you add to your coffee uh i don't think it's rum chata no nope, what not is rum it chata. <laughs> well in the morning i add you know honey of course 
and I add a little bit of whole milk, just a little bit to kind of break down the acid, I guess. And then I add some stuff that I don't know what it is, but it's supposed to, um, uh, it's supposed to toughen up your skin. Oh, collagen. Collagen, yeah, yeah. So I add a big. Oh, do you really? Of collagen every Wow, yeah. does it work? Oh, yeah. Look have at my... you been noticing your skin is I have really, a, I have in tough your skin. nails are yeah. really good? I used and... to have thin skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would get my feelings hurt so easily. <laughs> oh, but you take collagen and now you don't get your now feelings I'm hurt tough quite skin. as Yeah, I'm I a see. tough skin guy now. Well, you know, it's, it's funny because this coffee hour is, so many people have so many questions that they want to ask you personally, oh. not oh, to yeah. do with your beekeeping or those kinds of things. <laughs> But there's a lot of folks out there that just want to know more about David Burns, the man. Oh, that's a secret. I can't reveal that. <laughs> I can't reveal any of your no. secrets. So I'm going to have to ask you a few things. All right. But you already told us about your coffee. That must be mm. like like the your favorite thing to have in the mornings. Oh, absolutely. And a good breakfast. And, and you like your breakfast, don't you? Oh, yeah. Okay. So tell us um, a little bit about you personally. Like, what's your favorite movie? Oh, my favorite movie of all time is Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. I love, that's my favorite. I've watched it over and over and over again. <laughs> I have. I've, I enjoy it. Do you think that you're hoping you'll get a do-over in life? Or? Yeah. What, I mean, what are you thinking? What do you like it? <laughs> I think the first time I watched it, when I realized, wait a minute, it seems like he's repeating the same day, mm -hmm. that that was interesting because he was the only one that knew it. and. He was able to change how he approached life, knowing what was coming up, and it just fascinates me that to watch that how he he became kind of suicidal because he couldn't stand what was going on. Uh -huh. Then he became very generous. Then he fell in love. He learned, and, you he know, so to deal with what? Yeah, what he, had. he was kind of an arrogant um, weather reporter, uh -huh. and then he became more of a caring, generous person. Then he finally fell in love and. It's just a cool story. I guess a lot of people, when they wake up in the morning, kind of have the same day. Ooh, they do. That's a good point. Yeah. So yeah. I guess That's, it's you is know, that bad learning. or good? You know, I, I think a day is just a day. But, I, you know, if you do wake up and you think, oh, this is going to be the same thing all yeah. over again, the same oatmeal for breakfast, the same I go to work and it's just the same, yeah. and I come home and it's just the same, but... Yeah, I think what you're saying, you, you really enjoy that because even though he knows it's just going to be the same, he has control. He oh, has there the you power go. To, yeah. to change his day Absolutely. and turn it into, you know, it may not have the circumstances that he wants, but he's able to change those circumstances mm. and make it Absolutely. something better. Better. And not A just, lot better. Not just, you know, routine, mundane. Yeah. Wow, that's really good stuff, Sherry. You're the philosopher today during coffee time. <laughs> the coffee wow. time philosopher. All right, that's one question. Okay, so um, what? Oh, I thought with the movie when I said Groundhog Day. Yeah. Classically, you should have said, all right, so what's your favorite movie? Oh, okay, so we'll try that again. So what's your favorite movie? Groundhog Day. What's your favorite movie? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't go so well. No, I'm the glad we didn't do around. that. <laughs> I would edit that out, but I don't want to spend that much time editing. <laughs> so we'll leave it in there. <laughs> okay, but the reality is you really don't watch a lot of television. I mean, you can sit oh, down with do. me and, and start to watch a show, and, and uh, you'll get really bored and, and walk Ooh, off. Ooh, I do. Uh, but I do like some episodes that are ridiculous, and I'll watch them over, over and, and over, over and, and over. over. Yeah. The same, maybe yeah. the same episode. Over and over, over, and over. Of, of, of a series <laughs> of episodes. Like, so if we have to buy episodes, it, we don't ch we don't spend a lot of money on you. <laughs> we only buy a couple of episodes yeah. and you just watch them over and over Season and over. Season one, episode four. That's right. David's That's happy. Just That's just I, it. My favorite episodes are Everybody Loves Raymond. That's got to be my all-time watch it over and over. It's funny every time I watch every <laughs> I love that show. He does. He laughs and laughs. You can I, hear him all over the house, and he's just watched it 22 times. I love it. I bet when you were a kid, you were that kid who you made your mother keep playing that same. Of course, we didn't have DVDs back in our days, but no. you you would have made her play some Disney movie. That's probably true. Over and over remember. and over and over and over again. Phil Rosenth Rosenthal, he was uh -huh. the director, the creator of Everybody Loves Raymond, and the comedy in that in that 
series. He's a good writer. Wow, it's so good. He was a very good writer. And I love or everything creator. about him. There were other writers that were great. There were sure. other writers too. And you know, he has another show on Netflix called Somebody Feed Phil. And it's about him going around the, the world eating different food in different places. I love that. Yeah. And sometimes he has some of the actors from Everybody Loves Raymond on that show. And I, it I, does. I, I it watch does. that. It does. So what is your favorite food now that you talked about? <sighs> Boy, that's a the tough one. Show. I don't know why, but I... It's not a cooking show. It's there's an only, eating show. There's only one thing that I don't like eating. I will eat it, but I don't like to. And you know what that is. It's a vegetable. One thing that you don't like to eat? Like, a vegetable you don't like to yeah, eat? Yeah, I'll pick them out of whatever food they're Oh, cuccumbers. You yeah, don't cucumbers. like cucumbers. That's the and only I thing. And I do, so I eat the cucumbers. That's the only thing I will pick out of my food is cucumbers. I don't like the flavor of cucumbers. But I wonder why. I just don't. But I, everything else I love, probably my favorite food, it's a tie between like going to a steakhouse and having a nice steak, potatoes, and Mexican food. Mm -hmm. I do like Mexican food with good salsa and a margarita. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tequila. Yeah. You like your tequila. Yeah. You know, it's funny. The other night <laughs> we were out at a steakhouse eating and you, of course, had like one martini and then you had Are you sure? <laughs> two martinis. Oh. <laughs> and after two martinis, you said to me, you know, David, you are, did you call me a genius, I think? <laughs> you said, yeah, you said. You, I did. You did. Oh, you we're talking about a polymath. We're talking about polymath, yeah. Is that how you say it? It Do is you how you say polymath? it. You say polymath. But before we talk about polymath, you said, you're a genius. And I said, wow, <laughs> it only takes two martinis <laughs> Two martinis make me a genius. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I had to have the rum shot this morning when I woke up. So you would continue I would to, maintain being yeah, a you genius. Would maintain yeah. being a genius. Well, that was good, though. I was really, even though you were almost drunk, I was really encouraged <laughs> <laughs> by you. You've really encouraged me. I, I went to bed thinking I was a really smart dude. You are a smart dude. Uh, you, you, there are so many things you know about something, about everything. I know a lot I've of. I've got to where I don't even use the internet. I just, I just ask David, and he'll <laughs> spill off a question, and then I think, is that true? And then sometimes we're like, I don't know. <laughs> so then I have to prove it. I have to get the documentation, and I'll show you the science and why I knew it was right. But um, I do. I am kind of that guy that is a jack of all trades, but a master of none. none. Mm -hmm. And a long time I thought that was really bad. I thought. I always looked at that phrase as, you know, maybe you don't know a lot about anything, but something about everything. That's not a good thing. But after I've studied that, actually the people that have changed the world, and I'm not saying I'm one of these, but the people that have really changed the world and invented things are people that knew a whole lot about everything, but not real, really a, a specific thing. You could take Leonardo da Vinci. He was an artist, a poet, he, anatomy. He had a broad spectrum of things that he pursued, but he wasn't specialized in one area. And so that's called a polymath, a person who has a broad knowledge of many subjects. I'm a monomath. No, you're not. No, not at all. <laughs> you know a lot about You've ran businesses. You run businesses. You... You know a lot about um, things that I have no knowledge of. It's just a different, a different interest, I think. Around here, it takes two of our two of our brains to keep things going. <laughs> all right, so all right, I asked you um, your favorite movie and your and your favorite food, and what do you do when you're not working? What are some hobbies that you do when you're not? When we're not well, working, I do have one hobby this. that I really enjoy and I spend hours and hours doing. But it, it's sort of a hobby that I can't mention. Is that fair enough? It is fair enough. Yeah. And what, but they're going to say, why can't you mention it? What do you, <laughs> I mean, how do you say that? <clears throat> I don't know. What's a good way to. Um, and I've recently started this. You started hobby the hobby also, as well, didn't you? So I can't yeah. say what it is either. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that, do I? Uh, it's Okay, uh, other than that, okay. are there other things that you do? Oh, that wasn't sex, by the way. They, everyone's <laughs> thinking sex is my hobby. That It is a hobby, but it's not it's, the one we were referring to. Okay, no, no, because I entered that one a long time ago. <laughs> but this other one is just recent. Okay. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, other than that one, I enjoy ham radio. I ham started radio. that a year ago, and so ham radio is a lot of fun for me. Um, working on my amplifier this morning. I enjoy editing videos. I enjoy making videos. Uh, gosh, what am I leaving out? I have a lot of hobbies, don't I? Mm. A lot of things that you do. I do a lot of things. You do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of dabbling in uh, solar energy mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Got a solar panel. I got some uh, controller, a battery. I'm going to pursue that a little bit more. Uh, see if it's worth really doing something big, you know, in a, in a whole home project. But kind of dabbling in electronics all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Things like that. Well, let's turn it your way, Sherry. Um, <coughs> people would like to know, uh, what's your favorite movie? My favorite movie? I don't think I have a favorite movie. I'm not, you don't. I, I love the cinema. So there, I, I like uh, everything from documentaries to, I really like documentaries. I, oh, I you really know, do. I've watched some with you, and I have to say I love yeah, them, too. Yeah, I, I do. I, I, I like to, I, and e even books. I, I love to read you know, books about mm. people and mm -hmm. places and events and things. Somehow it seems, you know, I, I love a good, you know, I love good fiction too, but somehow life can be even stranger than anything anybody could make up. Yeah, so, right. So I enjoy, you know. It's a good point. It, different events and different people. I, I really enjoy that, but Boy, I'll watch anything. I, I can watch. Oh, yeah. I can watch the Avengers just as easily as I can a good you do like those, documentary yeah. on those kinds of. What things. about any fa any uh, popular episodes that you like watching? Episodes. I I don't watch TV like you do. I, huh. There there aren't specific episodes no of anything that yeah. that I that I really enjoy. But I like lots of different things. I like music. Yeah. Probably even more than. Your music. You've than, always um, been a musician. I have. I, yep. I I can play a couple of different instruments and Sing, and until choirs. COVID, you know, I've been in a couple of different choirs. But yep. you know, before that and all that kind of has stopped right now, so I can't do any of that. So what David gets is little mini concerts by Sherry in the kitchen, <laughs> <laughs> and I sing and I dance. You do. You enjoy that. I enjoy <laughs> listening to you. Absolutely. So, yeah. I've heard you play uh, the flute, the violin. The piano, other instruments you've played? Mm, I can play the organ. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, I can beat a mean tambourine. Oh, there you go. <laughs> like in the 60s, the 60s music, <laughs> 70s kind of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I'm not a music snob either. I like it all. You do. I do. You like even the new music. Oh, you? I love the new music. Yeah. And I like all the old stuff too. Absolutely. All the old classics. And I'm kind of stuck in Beatles. Type era of you are rock and roll in the 60s and you're 70s. Yeah, you're stuck in the 60s and 70s. But. Oh yeah, Barracuda by Heart. Oh, I love the music, the, gu the guitar riff on Barracuda. Wow, which they kind of stole from another band previously, but we won't go into that. <laughs> wow, you <laughs> by their own admission, they <laughs> kind of stole that, and the other group made them mad. But oh, uh, okay. So, uh, what's your favorite food? Hmm. You're the cook. I, yeah, I, see, I, I like to cook, and I like to cook lots of different things. And if I go to a restaurant, you won't find me going to the same restaurant every single time. I can't do that. I enjoy, I'm a foodie. I like good food, and I like the way it looks, and I like the ambiance and the people that you're sitting with. You do. And I, all of that I do too. turns into a good meal to me. I, I'm not the kind of person that would just yeah. grab a, something and sit out on the curb and eat it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you go to a restaurant, you, you want to invest in the ambiance, the relationships of people you're talking with. I you, do. You don't want to just pull over and grab a bite and eat fast I, and get out. No, I don't. I don't. I don't enjoy eating for those purposes. Right. That's at good. At all. Yeah. I'm rarely just hungry just get something to eat I, you know it's it's a thing for mm -hmm. me it's a celebration yeah you eat you eat some food you love some foods a lot better than i do like you love chicken livers or any kind of livers. oh i do love livers yeah. and fried oysters fried Ooh, oysters. i like that stuff yeah yep. never never the raw oyster in a shell no though. that is crazy i don't know how you can do that is it really raw or not has it been cooked a little know. bit i don't, I don't know, know. It should be cooked. I, I think I they're raw. I think they're raw oysters. Are they really? And, and oysters. How do you not get bacteria by eating raw oysters? I, I don't know. Wow. 
Well, somebody who's a raw oyster specialist yeah. that will set us straight exactly. on the comments. Exactly. All right. Uh, one final thing. Uh, your favorite thing would be, what's your favorite hobby? Did we talk about that? Yeah, we talked about hobbies. Oh, did we? With Music you? and... Hmm. No, I guess we did. Didn't, didn't we? I think so. Any other hobbies? Um, like? Any other hobbies? I times? really enjoy walking and... Yeah. Um, VRing. VR and I like e-gaming. Wow, yeah. you've really gotten into I, that. I enjoy that, but you know, again, that all started with COVID. You know, there's nothing yeah. else to do, yeah. so all right, they're well, like, let's find some new things to do because absolutely, yeah. I'm bored. Let's talk about COVID. <laughs> when COVID first hit, almost a, what, about a year ago, more than a year ago now, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is April. You know, we didn't know where things would go uh, in the world. And they've been really hard on a lot of people. A lot of people have died, which is sad. Mm -hmm. We've both been vaccinated. Mm -hmm. I think tomorrow we're through our vaccination time waiting period. And uh, that's, you know, we're really concerned about people's lives that have been negatively affected yeah. by COVID. Yeah, it's been and, really uh, sad. That's uh, sad. Um, I guess I'm leading to us, me and you, we're, we live out in the country. So here we are, COVID hits, you really can't, go to the places we normally went to to entertain ourselves with movies and restaurants and friends and social activities especially in the beginning that was in illinois really shut down uh -huh. but it really benefited you and i our relationship was just it did made better it did it's really sad when i hear people who have you know the relationships have suffered from spending so much time together is yeah. what I'm hearing, you know, we're just on top of each other all the time and there just was nowhere to breathe. And even though you and I, uh, for the past, I don't know, 13, 14 years, we've worked together all day. So we're actually at home together, uh, David and I, all day, every day yeah. together. But I'm I, not always here. Well, no, I'm, I mean, I'm not always here either. Yeah, I'm just yeah. saying that we work together. During COVID, we were. Yeah. And uh, we homeschool our son. So, you know, he was here all the all the time yeah. also. And some of our adult children work for us. And so, you know, they, they would still come to work. But for the most part, you know, it's, it's us here alone. And So we spend a lot of time together. <clears throat> we always have spent a lot of time we together. We always have. We always have. But for some reason, after COVID, it... it it changed it seemed like it was more um i i think most people began to think about relationships the, yeah. the people that they loved and the people that they spent time with and whether it was family or friends or partners or um people at work or whatever i think we all began to realize you know those that's the thing that really matters mm. you know it, it's just there's nothing else that really matters except, you know, loving the people that you're with. Yeah. And we've been married for 41 years now. 41. 41 years, but it just keeps getting Wow. I don't better. even look that old. <laughs> you don't look any older. And you sure years. don't. <laughs> <laughs> but that's great. It really, we spent a lot of time together, and it brought us closer. We Sometimes you would think we would kind of, our couples would irritate each other. You know, don't you have something else you need to do? You're bugging me. I need away from you. I, you know, and I'm pretty, and you are too, we're both very demonstrative. We're very outgoing, flamboyant. I mean, we're expressive. And uh, <laughs> it's funny, those of you that are watching that may know or not know our children, but we have six children. And wouldn't you say, other than maybe one, <coughs> five of them are very, very quiet? And not as kind of flamboyant or as loud or demonstrative as we are. Right. I think of one one of our sons is. Yeah. But there are other children. We thought they would bottle after us and be really like, ah, you know, <laughs> ah, loud and excited and talk all the time. But not so much. Is it because we talked all the time? <laughs> We're loud all the time. They never they, had a chance. They were just entertained. We are so enthralling that they just sat with their and listened to us with their mouths hung open and just hung on every word that we said. I could see that. <laughs> <laughs> Especially as teenagers. They just gathered at our feet and waited that's for our what, wisdom, didn't they? Yeah, that's while they clammed out of a window. That's what it was. That's what it was. <laughs> at night while we were sleeping. Mm. Wow. Well, anyway, COVID really brought us closer together. And we were we're we've always been close, but I've really enjoyed uh, just 
uh, different relationship and more we time had to, with you. Yeah, we had to learn different things yeah. to do with all that extra time on our hands. Yeah, and that's right. I, I remember we went metal detecting one day. <laughs> And one night we set up to like one o'clock in the morning and ate sardines out of a can. There you go. You know, just, wow. just like weird stuff maybe that, I don't know. Hey, let's see if you know sardines. <laughs> what what type of fish are sardines? Uh, um, sardines are, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Aren't sardines sardines? <laughs> well, they are called sardines, but if you were to kind of talk or about the a type of fish well it's a type of like fish sardine I think, means really really tiny fish <laughs> I, well i think sardines is a class of fish a class of fish i don't know <laughs> mm. i find them in my mind right now without you know researching it as i get older i forget all the things i know but i think they're in the herring family or the herring class i think it's made okay. up of different fishes in that herring class okay another you, youtuber is going to tell us you remember when i was talking about you being a genius yeah you need a <laughs> margarita sure. you need a margarita <laughs> margaritas for everybody watching i'm losing my genius -ness. <laughs> i don't know any longer if you know what you're talking about but okay we'll pretend that you do sardines i thought they were i think they're herring i like sardines i do too livers and sardines i like all that kind of they're good for you that okay. kind of, yeah. That, <laughs> like all that yeah. kind of weird stuff. Yeah. You know, that people want to know, you know, not to change the subject, but Let's people, change it. people want to know, uh, what kind of camera do you use? Oh, okay. that, they, that, they, they are really fascinated yeah. by YouTube, I guess, you know, mm, yep. and, and how to go about doing that. And so they really ask a lot of questions about your equipment. Yeah. So what okay. do you use? Well, it's funny because I have tried different cameras. You have. And it's been so frustrating. I started making YouTubes before they really had good cameras, you know. Um, so as cameras improved, you could buy them with, uh, you know, get more for your money. So for a long time, I had the little handheld kinds that mm -hmm. I'd put on a tripod. Mm -hmm. But the quality of those really weren't that well, weren't that good. Not at that time. Not at that time. And then I realized that my cell phone in my pocket was 100 times better than the expensive camera that I had bought at Best Buy. So I got a tripod and I stuck my cell phone on a tripod and Isn't it was that amazing. Great. That yeah. is amazing what you can do with a cell phone. Yeah, it is. Nowadays. And we used to, wow, cameras. Yeah. I mean, we were, we're so old that we remember, you know, <laughs> the, old, the old cameras back in the old days and taking those little things down to, to the, the drugstore. To the drugstore. And mail, or mailing them off to the Kodak. And going back like. Yeah. Six weeks later, and getting a whole packet full of prints. You're oh yeah, and the first, and there'd be three that were like a finger, a yellow piece, a white blurry. It's like, well, what did I take a or picture you, of? You took a picture over a, a, a roll that had already been used. Oh yeah, and so you had all these ghost images. Yeah, everywhere. Oh, my gosh, it was like you could find like two, and the ones that were good were out of focus or crooked or had a finger in front of them. And, and then Polaroids like, came along. And oh, we just wow. The it would just spit like, the picture. <laughs> and you could kind of... Instantly nope. you could see a picture of yourself and we just thought that was so cool. And they had a flash bulb on the pol Polaroid camera that oh, I remember. Oh, I do. And what I remember the most about that flash is how it smelled so good when it burned. It would, it would flash and... Psh, I don't remember just, a smell. It would burn and then it would... Put off some dangerously toxic fumes in the air, I'm sure. And I would just love that carcinogenic just... smell. <laughs> it was so you good. You just sniff that in. But the, it, the Polaroid would shoot out a picture. Probably cost a fortune back then. It did cost a fortune. And they I were think... very expensive. And you would always hate to do one unless it was really mm -hmm. worth it. It was like 15 bucks. It was like oh, yeah, a buck a or two a picture. Yeah. And back in those days... I remember I I was making like a buck ninety an hour working, you know, yeah. at a factory somewhere. And but each of these pictures were, I know, you know, an hour's worth of work. Yeah, and, <laughs> and so you treated them like they were gold. You yeah, know, so, <laughs> and then you you know back then my parents collected all their photos in a big box. Yeah. No, nobody had an album. There's a photo box, and you want to watch yeah. the pictures, you just take the lid off this big box and film. Yeah. Well, the yeah. Polaroids. There were certain kinds, maybe they improved, but they would just fade over uh, time. They would. They would fade, turn yellow. Yeah. Really, really, really Or blue. Yellow. They would just all turn blue, yeah. and you, you can't really see the image anymore. You just lose it. But now, it's so much better. Now we can take pictures on our camera. 
And then we never get plans. <laughs> <laughs> and then we delete they just, them. They're just on my phone. It's like, oh, crap, I, I got too much space taken up. Delete, 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 delete. Grandchildren looking Easter eggs. Mm, can I make a YouTube video? Delete. <laughs> it's like, then they're off in the cloud somewhere. But yeah. I don't know really how or to your get kid, to the cloud. Or your kid gets a hold of your camera and takes oh, like 120 oh. pictures up their nose, you yeah. know? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, Why do they do that? <laughs> Are they have the <laughs> app that stretches their face out and they look at my phone? It's like it's in that. So now we're much more technolo technologically advanced. <laughs> mm. Okay, wow. so you told us what kind of camera you use, but what kind of, how do you, et do you do all that yourself? I when do. When you it. edit it and, and all that kind of stuff? Yep, I've not reached the point of stardom and fame where I have editors that edit, so I have to edit everything myself. Yep. Hey, here comes some grandchildren. Yeah. <laughs> so I use Final Cut Pro in Final my Cut editing. Pro. Yep. And it's I'm pretty I'm a pretty fast editor. I really I've done it for so long that it's mm -hmm. really easy mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, the um, worst thing out here was the the upload time. Yeah. Oh it's my just, gosh. It could take days to upload it. Yeah, we get our inter video. we get our internet from six miles away uh, wirelessly. So anything that flies in the path, like bees or birds or a cloud, and then our internet upload is horrible. <laughs> it can take me two days to upload a video. Yeah, sometimes. but not now. No, we're we're experimenting as a beta tester for Starlink. So that's worked out really, yeah. really good yeah. now. Works out really good. Like a two-day upload now takes ten minutes. That's so amazing. It is amazing. That's amazing. Know. Oh, this microphone we're using is. Uh, can you read that? Blue. Blue. <laughs> I forget the name of it. But it's a nice microphone. I'm, so I, I kind of record. The bad thing about using your cell phone is that the audio does not track exactly with this, the video. So in other words, it looks like you're watching one of those old-fashioned movies where the, the guy's mouth is going, but it's not lined up with what he's saying. Yeah. So. But you, you must fix that. I do fix that. It's always like. Wow five seconds off or something ridiculous. So anyway, I, now I'm feeding this into a computer so I have a video file and then I have a separate audio file. So I had to mesh those together. <laughs> okay. <All laughs> so right. I, I take the simple way of making videos is use my cell phone. I use a, it's a Note 8. It's an old Galaxy Note 8 mm -hmm. because I like the, um, what do you call that little thing that pops out? You can write a stylus. It comes with a stylus and I can take notes on the screen. Okay. You you had the fancy phone. You have the flip phones. The the new flip phone. Wow. Okay, I think it's time to wrap it up. So what is one thing that you really want people to know about you? Ooh, I that's an easy one for me. The one thing I want to know, want people to know about me is that I enjoy people and I want people to see me for who I really am and that is a very kind and generous <laughs> and caring person toward other people. And I get my kicks out of being with people and socializing and helping people out. Mm -hmm. I, I know that's kind of weird today, maybe to say, but and I, don't, I don't mean it in an arrogant way, but I really enjoy having fun with people and seeing people happy and enjoying life. That's kind of a goal of mine you to do. help cheer people up, I guess. Yeah, be an encourager. Yeah. So if they, can, if they know that about me, then they can overlook all my mistakes and my bad times. <laughs> and we make plenty of them. Oh, yeah. I make a lot of them. Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for joining us today. If you like this video, please feel uh, free to subscribe. Click on the bell to, so you can be notified each time I make a new video. It's been fun being with you. <laughs> Did we talk about anything bees related? I forgot. I don't think well, so. Well, say one thing, bee related. You're, you're the you're I'm the you're bee related. You guys um, can come in here. Did you hurt um, yourself? Yeah. Something bee related. What? Oh, here's bee. JD. Here. Something bee related. You're the one that liked to read our book. Did you read our book? Yeah. That we wrote? Yeah. You're out of like the camera. It? You're too tall. Nobody can see You're your face. Get down there. here. You have to get down. All they see is your shirt. <laughs> tell us something you know about a honeybee. Hmm? Tell, they, us some, uh, uh, tell us one have fact. Have you ever about been stung by a honeybee? Yeah. You have bees at your house sometimes. Where did it sting yet? I mean, it was a long time ago. Long like, time ago. like my the first time I got stinged. Yeah. I mean, I don't really remember. You, you don't remember. Did you swell up? Huh? It's like not a big deal, is it? Really, is it? I mean, no. No, we don't get stung very often out here at all, do we? No. All right, everybody. See you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Actually, I'll, cl I'll stop recording. Okay, click on the button. I know.